Do you want to maximize your success with NCUA? Join Mark Trichel as he shares with you the insider's view on passing your exam with Flying Colors. The With Flying Colors podcast is sponsored by Credit Union Exam Solutions by Mark Trichel. If you would like to work directly with the Credit Union Exam Solutions team and receive support to optimize your results with NCUA so you save time and money, visit us at marktrichel.com to find out more. Hey everyone, this is Mark Teichel with another episode of With Flying Colors. In my last episode, I made references to speaking about Janet Yellen testifying before a subcommittee on banking. And I didn't get to that because I had so much to say in the other episode. And this is a standalone episode that will speak mostly, if not all, to uh, the testimony that Treasury Secretary Yellen gave last week. And specifically, more specifically, Senator James Lankford asked Yellen several questions as it relates to banks and the deposit insurance that were provided to Signature Bank and SVB Bank. And I'm getting this clip from C-SPAN. And as C-SPAN says, this clip title and description were not created by C-SPAN, nor was it created by me. But it's, I'm going to let Senator Lankford and Yellen speak for themselves, mostly because I just find this a fascinating discussion. Senator Lankford is very calm and measured in what he asks Treasury Secretary Yellen, who answers the questions as best she can. At the end, Lankford does make a reference to credit unions not being taxed as well. So without further ado... Here is Senator James Lankford asking, among other things, what is your plan to keep large depositors from moving their money from community banks to large banks? All right, Senator Lankford. A couple of things. Let me start with some of the banking issues we're dealing with on it. Will the deposits in every community bank in Oklahoma, regardless of their size, be fully insured now? Are they fully recovered? Every bank, every community bank in Oklahoma, regardless of the size of the deposit, will they get the same treatment that SVB, the P, just got or Signature Bank just got? A bank only gets that treatment if a majority of the FDIC board, a supermajority, a supermajority of the Fed board, and I, in consultation with the president, determine that the failure to protect uninsured depositors would create systemic risk and significant economic and financial consequences. So what is your plan? That determination. Right. Right. So so what is your plan to keep large depositors from moving their funds out of community banks into the big banks? We have seen the mergers of banks over the past decade I'm concerned you're about to accelerate that by encouraging anyone who has a large deposit in a community bank to say, we're not going to make you whole, but if you go to one of our preferred banks, we will make you whole at that point. Um, look, I mean, we're, that's certainly not something that we're encouraging. That is happening right now. That is happening because depositors are concerned about the bank failures that have happened and whether or not other banks could also um, no, it, it, fail. It's happening and because it's, you're fully insured no matter what the amount is. If you're in a big bank, you're not fully insured if you're in a community bank. Well, you're not fully insured. and You, you big, were at Signature, and it, big, was, it just barely met the threshold. You were at Signature. Well, we felt that there was a serious risk of contagion that could have brought down and triggered runs on many banks. Um, And that's something, given that our judgment is that the banking system overall is safe and sound, um, depositors should have confidence in the system. And we took these actions. So there's a special assessment that's been done on community banks in my state and all banks across the country. Was there any discussion that that special assessment would only apply to the larger banks, or was it always assumed the special assessment would cover every bank, including rural banks in my state? Um, 
I, I think I, I'm not certain what the rules are around that. Um, that that's the FDIC to determine. It, it, it has been reported publicly that we had a large number of Chinese investors that are there, including some that were companies directly connected to the Chinese Communist Party. It, will, will those individuals, will those individuals, companies, entities, and investors that are Chinese investors be made whole? based on assessments in my banks in Oklahoma. So what I'm asking is, will my banks in Oklahoma pay a special assessment to be able to make Chinese investors whole from Silicon Valley Bank? Uninsured investors will be made whole in that bank. And I suppose that could include foreign and foreign depositors, but I don't believe there's any legal basis to discriminate among uninsured. I get it, but I, I'm just saying my community banks are going to pay this additional fee. It is always fascinating to me as well, the conversation that taxpayers are being made whole in this, that taxpayers are not going to have any kind of consequence on this. I'm sure my bankers are going to be very excited to know they no longer pay taxes and their banks no longer pay taxes. Credit unions don't pay taxes. Banks do. And so they're definitely taxpayers as well. And all banks make their revenue off of rates and fees and such to their account holders, which means every Oklahoman will pay higher fees we're, in their community we're, bank. We're just going to have to have move on. We have lapse of the banking system and its economic consequences that will have very severe effects on banks in Oklahoma I'm, that will also be threatened. I'm, I'm just worried about, gonna, long, I'm just worried about the long term. We are going to have to move on. Well. We're not going to get all senators in. Wow. All right. So that's about the best five minutes of banking testimony I've ever seen. A lot to unpack there. You know, the reference to Chinese depositors in the Communist Party getting paid by Oklahoma banks. You know, when you frame it in that light, it kind of points out a lot of things. Yellen said that you can't discriminate amongst the uninsured. Well, you can't discriminate amongst the uninsured at one particular institution, but they are discriminating against uninsured, saying if you're big enough for us to be concerned that you could have a contagion effect, you will get insured. But if you're just below that level or you're a community bank, you are going to have to pay for this, yet you can't have the benefit of it. And then the whole concept of, of medium-sized banks losing deposits to the bigger institutions if you add that to what Barney Frank said yesterday, that it's his belief that the reason we don't have higher insurance limits is because the big, significantly important, too big to fail banks don't want higher insurance limits because they have the competitive advantage of knowing that they're, they're too big to fail. So you, you can discriminate because you'll cover the losses in some. What about the losses that happen in under, uninsured deposits previously? There are people, there are NCUA board decisions that get appealed where they're not able to pay over that insured limit. So I'm not debating that they took action that didn't need to be taken. I'm just, there's a lot of tentacles to this. There's a lot of things that need to be taken into consideration. Now that they changed the game and said, there was systemic risk from these institutions that could have had economic con consequences that could have bled into other banks. The whole, the whole game has changed because of this and where it ends, nobody really knows yet. But this, again, I just wanted to share that whole clip without interrupting it because it, it was a fantastic discussion about some of the collateral issues. And, and Senator Lankford mentioned that banks do pay taxes. So taxpayers are being impacted. These banks and the owners of these banks are being impacted by the government stepping up and deciding two banks were significantly important. And I, I, I believe they should have that authority. I just think that there are a lot of collateral unintended consequences that, that the FDIC, the Fed, Treasury, NCUA, Congress, and the president need to figure out moving forward. On a related note, the discussion of the possibility of insuring business deposits and maybe all deposits, there are other issues that would create for the National Credit Union Share Insurance Fund because the way the act reads, the only money they can have other than the insured deposit, the 1% that credit unions provide is the retained earnings. There's no other way for the insurance fund to collect and build earnings other than the retained earnings. And if the denominator is going to go up with more insured deposits, 
the numerator only goes up on a one-to-one -one ratio, which depletes the equity ratio of the insurance fund, which could ultimately, if not resolved by some other Federal Credit Union Act change, could lead to the need for a premium sooner as opposed to later for credit unions. So credit unions ultimately could be impacted by any change in the insured deposit amount, whether that's full insurance, 350, 500, business accounts only, there are things that could impact credit unions because of that. One other last comment relative to this, Senator Lankford made reference to one of our preferred banks, someone who is significantly important, bring the deposits over here. There's going to be a big fight between smaller credit unions, between smaller banks and mid-sized banks and the big banks. And a lot of political pressure will be put on every politician because of this by the banker by the bankers. And most importantly, you don't want to have a run. You never want to have a run. And the actions that were taken when you see the volume of funds that were moving out of those other institutions, I understand why FDIC, Treasury, and the Fed did act. Again, it's just these the collateral damage and the collateral issues that it's created will be here for until they'll be here for years to come. There's going to be laws changed, coverages changed, all sorts of things changed in, in banking. And we don't even know what that might mean yet, but this is just the beginning. It, it's not anywhere close to the end. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of With Flying Colors and we'll listen again soon. I'll have more on this topic as the situation warrants. This is Mark Treichel signing off with Flying Colors. Thank you for joining us on this episode of With Flying Colors. Subscribe on your favorite podcast app to hear future episodes where subject matter experts of all varieties will provide tips on how to achieve success with NCUA. If you would like to learn more about how we assist credit unions, check out our services at marktreichel.com.